Okay, this is part of Oracusoni, population 27,000. And this, if actually for Darfur, this is a, quite a small camp. Um, in Darfur, the largest camp is 170,000. So you can imagine the sprawl of that. And every single person here has come here fleeing from a burning village, from bombs falling. Um, a place where they had a life, uh, fields that sustained them, um, enough to grow uh, and enough to sell in the marketplace. We were hearing about lives just completely ruptured and um, people driven to this place where, to be sure, they're kept alive, but um, that's it. They're, they're receiving less than the minimum required to sustain life. I mean, the calories uh, that they're getting are now less because the World Food Program is running out of money. Um, education in, insufficient. Um, clean water. I, I've seen the well. It's hard to believe that this is okay. And actually what crosses my mind again and again is this, this is not okay. Um, the international community could can and must uh, bring security to Darfur. All these hollow promises and all these sort of half-ass attempts to uh, say that we're doing our utmost, so we send in a force scarcely able to protect itself. So when there finally is uh, the hope for justice with the ICC, um, world leaders conspire and let's not make him feel too bad lest a peace process be derailed. But the truth is there is no peace process. But you get back to the individual. Every single tent here houses a family, and every single family here has lost everything, and in many cases, everyone. And these little kids here have really nothing ahead of them except more of this, uh, no education and, and no future until they can return home and begin uh, to rebuild their lives. These are the victims of, uh, of our indifference. Hand to hand